to pray for Can you turn your light on? You need to pray for yourself, okay? I need my light turn light off and see. No, I'm going to pull the laundry. Can you turn my light off and see if I need it off? All right, you guys, we're starting. And oh. I know you can't see me today. I I don't know what's going on with my camera, but hopefully it'll fix itself or I'll you turn my light off? hit the right it. button yeah. before we end. So oh. we're still going to have class. We're still going to do everything like we usually do. Who has prayer requests? Yeah. Who's got prayer requests? Anyone? I got prayer requests. I just told you to pray for you. Pray for me. Okay, we will for healing. And what about you, John? How is everyone in the house doing? Good. Still pray for me, too. Okay. I still pray for my mom and, their, and, the, and all of our family. What's wrong with John, Mom? And nothing wrong with John. Why is that pray for him? Because he's been over bronchitis. He's been sick and stuff. It's your lungs, honey. Uh -huh. Okay. You're, it's okay. And um, pray for my mom and all of us and stuff. Yeah, Saturday's gonna be tough, but... Oh, Faith said Faith wants to let you know she was crying yesterday because she misses George. Oh, well, that's you know that's part of grief, and sometimes something will happen. You know, you'll you'll what's hear a, a song, or you'll hear something, or see something remind you of them. So that's okay. That's part of how you get through it. That just means you loved him, and you still do. Mm -hmm. All right. So it feels very strange not being able to see everybody, but at least I'm here. So we're going to bring this. What? Can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay, yes. good. All right. So we're going to get started with scripture and prayer. Um, do you want to do the Lord's Prayer after Faith reads uh, the scripture, John? I don't know how I do it. I've been a long time. That's okay. You do it as best as you can. The Lord knows your heart. Okay. Okay. All right, Faith. So we're going to read Ephesians 4 and 32 down here. Be kind and compassionate. Compassionate. Okay. And then our Father... All right, John, for the the best you can, and it's okay. I'll follow. Oh, I'll follow. Follow. Who I'll are you? I'll be in heaven. I'll be in name. Here come. What's the other one? Thy will be done. Be done. Air of air heaven. Air this this day. A day of dread. And forgive us. All the best of passes. As, if, we, huh? as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us, against us and lead us not this season, but deliver us for evil for thine, the goalie forever, forever. Amen. Amen. Good job. You okay. remembered a lot. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. okay. So today our our lesson is called Unwelcome. So it's been a while since we yeah. have been in Bible study, but we're going to go over a little bit of what we were kind of studying before we went. Um, yeah. So we're continuing, sorry, our study about the time the Israelites spent in the wilderness after they left Egypt. So they were going to the land God promised them. We know that is the promised land, and he promised it to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So our last lesson, we learned that they actually got to the promised land, but they were too afraid to move in, and they didn't trust God. So because they didn't trust God, to help them take over the promised land, God made them wait 40 years. And so they had to stay in the wilderness all that time, all that 40 years, all because yeah. they didn't trust God. Even after all the stuff that God had done for them on their journey to the promised land, part of the Red Sea, fed them every day. I mean, you name it. God kept doing 
everything for them. And at the last moment, when it came down to it, they didn't trust him. So today we're going to hear how it finally, after 40 years, was time for the people to move into the promised land. And Moses tried to lead the people through the wilderness. He wanted to go one way, but of course, these stubborn heads, they couldn't. So they re they reached a type of roadblock. You know what a roadblock is? No. No. Kind of like when, when something is in the way. They mm. reached a roadblock. So you can't go forward because you're stuck there because something's in your way. So so we're going to find out what happened. Okay. So I'm going to be reading out of the book of Numbers, which is in the Old Testament. So it's probably going to be about 10 verses. So I'll start with Numbers 20. Um, this is when I wish Tanaya was here too, my reader. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully she'll be back soon. Maybe you guys could tell her to... to um, bring the tablet to the church on Saturday and maybe we can write down some instructions on how to get there, you know, so she can get on herself. She can learn. She's, Mom, she's making it out tonight to bring the tablet. So she can, so she can help her. Okay, so I'm going to read, first I'll read Numbers 20, verses 14 through 21, and then I'm going to go to chapter 21 and read about three or four verses out of that. So first, 14 through 21 in Numbers 20. While Moses was at Kadesh, he sent ambassadors to the king of Edom with this message. This is what your relatives, the people of Israel, say. You know all the hardships we have been through. Our ancestors went down to Egypt, and we lived there a long time, and we and our ancestors were brutally mistreated by the Egyptians. But when we cried out to the Lord, he heard us and sent an angel who brought us out of Egypt. Now we are camped at Kadesh, a town on the border of your land. Please let us travel through your land. We will be careful not to go through your fields and vineyards. We won't even drink water from your wells. We will stay on the king's road and never leave it until he, we have passed through your territory. But the king of Edom said, stay out of my land or I will meet you with an army. The Israelites answered, we will stay on the main road. If our livestock drink your water, we will pay for it. Just let us pass through your country. That's all we ask. But the king of Edom replied, stay out. You may not pass through our land. With that, he mobilized his army and marched out against them with an imposing force. Because Edom refused to allow Israel to pass through their country, Israel was forced to turn around. So now I'll read chapter 21, verses 21 through 24. The Israelites sent ambassadors to King Sihon of the Amorites with this message. Let us travel through your land. We will be careful not to go through your fields and vineyards. We won't even drink water from your wells. We will stay on the king's road until we have passed through your territory. But King Sion refused to let them cross his territory. Instead, he mobilized his entire army and attacked Israel in the wilderness, engaging them in a battle at Jahaz. But the Israelites slaughtered them with their swords and occupied their land from the Arnon River to the Jabbok River. They went only as far as the Ammonite border because the boundary of the Ammonites was fortified. So basically, Moses didn't argue or fight with the king of Edom, the first one we, we heard about. Even when the king did not give Moses what he wanted. And so that verse that that faith read at the beginning about be kind and compassionate it's hardest to do that when someone's mistreating you or rejecting you not giving you what you're asking and being mean and and just you know that's the hardest i think for me i know if somebody's being super mean i want to tell them off but 
<laughs> you know, that doesn't please God when we do that. And so Moses was really demonstrating a lot of not only self-control, but respect. So, it, you know, even when people reject us, you know, other countries were unfriendly to Moses and the Israelites. And, you know, sometimes people are unfriendly and unkind to you or me or people who they see as different, right? And, yeah. you know, even then we can show them kindness and compassion. It's like I said, it's not always easy, but it is the right thing to do and it pleases God. And it doesn't, it doesn't keep it going. You know, you know, you can do the right thing, even if you're doing it all by yourself. And when someone treats you that way, um, like you don't belong or you have no right to be there or, you know, that you ask them something and they just come at you with a very mean attitude or disrespectful, you know, it's, it's our, our nature to want to do that right back to them, but that doesn't really get you anywhere. And in those times you have to, you just have to pray, <laughs> you know, and, and just ask God to help you keep your cool because, you know, both of you going at each other, that's just two people disrespecting each other. So no matter what they said, you know, it, it Moses, you know, he held his cool, even though these people were not giving him what he wanted and threatening him and not letting him pass, even though he said, hey, you know, we're not going to do anything. We just want to pass. And if any of our animals drink your water, we'll pay for it. You know, we just want to pass through. And these people were just not letting them. And so, you know, like I said, there was, there was, you know, a, other countries that were unfriendly to Moses and, and the Israelites for whatever reason. Right. And so it was all in how Moses really trusted God and obeyed God. And so it's all really in the way that we kind of handle these situations that we're up against. So that's kind of what today's lesson is about is being kind and compassionate, even when someone's not showing you that same respect. And it is, it's tough because just you want to retaliate and you want to tell them off or yell at them or, you know, something. And I, I get it, you know, and sometimes we lose our cool and we do, we say things that we shouldn't have said or, and we say, well, that person just made me so angry, but yes, they do. People can make us angry, but we, we don't have control over what they do and say, but we do have control over what we say and how we react to it, right? So that's always something to keep in mind. So do you guys have any questions or comments about that part? No. No, okay, you don't usually, so. All right, so now you're gonna read the workbook part and um, can you see it, Faith? Is it big enough? Yeah. Okay. God lead the people out of Egypt. Egypt and across the Red Sea. He provided provided food and water for them. God brought the people to his mountain mountain to worship him he gave them 10 and rules for living Then God lead the people to the land, land he promised.
Abraham. Abraham. Isaac. Isaac and Jacob. But the people re refuse refuse to go into the prop to the promised land. They were afraid of the people who lived there. They did not trust God to give them the, to give them the Lord the Lord the land. The land. Mm -hmm. So God punished the people for for. 40? 40 years. They wandered around in the wonderness one. Good. By one all the grown ups who refused to go into the promised land died, but soon God would give their children and grandchildren the promised land. Moses started... Hang on. There you go. You got, you're in the right spot. Moses, Moses started, started to... Direct? Direct the people back to the... Edge? edge of the time the edge of the promised land they would camp in Moab Moab until God said it was time to move into the promised land let's take the king's highway through Edom Edom said it will help us get to Moab. Moab. Moses sent mes messengers to the king of Egypt. Please, Edom. Edom, please let us travel along the highway through your lands. We will not bother anyone. We will not walk through your fields. And damage. Damage. Your car. Crops. Crops. If our animals drink any water, we will pay for it. The king of Edom knew about the Israelites. Israelites. They had been in the area of the area for 40 40 years after all the king knew the Israelite were a large and noisy noisy crowd crowd there were many people and lots of animals. No way, the king of Edom said, if you try to bring your people into our country, country, I will send 
Soldiers. Soldiers to stop you. Moses did not argue. Instead? Instead, he lead the people along back reed, Road. reeds, roads. They went around Edom when they got near the Amorites. Amorites land. Moses wanted to wanted to get back on the king's highway. Moses sent a message to the king of the Amorites. Amorites, good. Amorites, please let us travel along the king's highway through your land. We will not bother anyone. We will not walk through your fields. Built in damage. Damage your crops if our animals drink any water, we will pay for it. The Amorid King refused. He started a f fight with the Israelites. Good. The Israelites, when won the fight, they took over the Amorite land lands, and from there they begun to take over all the lands that lead to the promised land. Well, there you go. Awesome. All right, so this one says the long way. Take the short route through the maze. Moses wanted to take the short route to Moab. The king of Edom said no. Did Moses argue or take the long way? Take the long way. So he didn't argue. He took the long way. So take the long way through the maze to show Moses did not fight the king of Edom. Okay, so what's the long way? Let me turn the draw thing on here. Where is it? Oh, there it is. <clears throat> okay, so where am I going? Uh, so I'm not going straight across because that would be the short way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I got to go down this way. Let's see. Ooh, let's see. Um... Let's see, I think. Oh, wait, maybe down this way here and up. Uh, this way, here, there, there we, we go. go. <laughs> yeah. So that was the long way. That's a long way to go because he could have gone just straight across, right? Yeah. But they were being yeah, do that. There's about it. No, they threatened to fight them. Okay, so this is the story tonight usually reads. I'll read it this week. So it's called Kind Ivan. I am busy. I will ignore their words. I have work to do. Ivan talked to himself as he cleaned the drink dispenser. Ivan worked in a busy restaurant. He cleaned the drinks counter. He cleaned dirty tables. He mopped the floor. Ivan loved his job, but some of the customers were unkind. They made fun of the way Ivan looked. Ivan was small, so his clothes looked too big. His glasses were thick. He wore hearing aids. People who did not know Ivan mocked him. They called him names. Their words hurt Ivan's feelings, but he worked hard to ignore them. 
I am here to help the customers, said Ivan. No matter what they say, I will be kind to them. So yeah, that's a good example of somebody that, you know, probably that's, it is hurtful and sometimes you want to say something back, but it's best to just keep being kind and doing, doing what God has you to do, right? Okay, so this one says, finish it. Finish the cartoon. Show how you would respond when someone is unfriendly to you. So this person is pointing and saying, I do not like you. What is, what is a good way to handle that? If somebody says, I don't like you. What do you think, Faith? Uh, I don't know. How would you handle it if somebody pointed at you said and said, I don't like you? Stop, that's not nice. That's good, yeah. I mean, I would probably say like, that's okay. You don't have to like me. <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's, it's, you know, what you don't want to do is start yelling, getting angry, right? Mom? Mom? You guys here? Have a band-aid. Okay. I'm bleeding. Don, where'd you go? I had a desk kit, I had it pulled off. And I started getting blood on my finger. No, she's not. I can hear her. I'm here. Did I lose you guys? What happened? We're almost done. John? Hey, I don't know. Oh, you're back. Yeah. We're almost done. We're almost done. I promise. It was a pretty short lesson. John, are you back? Yeah, yes, I am. Okay. All right. So we're going to wrap up here. Okay. Um, what's one thing you learned or remembered from tonight's lesson? Uh, do, do, do not go straight to see. You what? Do not go straight. Don't go, you can't go straight. Oh, yeah, they just you. let him through. <laughs> How are you, Faith? Faith, what about you? What? What one thing you remembered or learned from tonight? Uh, the maze. Yeah, that's kind of what John said, too. All right. So we, you know, follow oh, that. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. To always remember to be kind, even when someone's. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, okay, well, you guys did a great job, and yeah. I know that was kind of a quick lesson, but that's yeah. good. I'm glad to be back, and who's yeah. going to pray us out? Maria. Ah, you guys. We haven't heard a good John prayer in a long time. Okay. Okay. Let's pay for, pay for the pastor to get back soon. Pay for Maria. Let's pay for Tonight, tonight, sorry, grandma, pray for Anzi, pray, pray for the food on Saturday, pray, pray for Rev, Fancy Rev, Pablo, Jim, everybody, and all day, all day Friday, all day Saturday, Sunday, early, oh. early, God, pray all power. Early. Early, early, early. Sunday morning. <laughs> I just missed that one. Pastor always missed that one. I know, huh? Yeah, I see, I see, I, I see Saturday for the food, though. All right. Amen. Thank you for that prayer, John. All right, you guys. Awesome job. I'll see you Saturday. Okay. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye. bye.